ربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وبعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran والذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما امر الله به ان يصلى ويفسدون في الارض اولئك لهم اللعنه ولهم سوء الدار Surah Ra'ad, Surah 13 of the Qur'an, verse 25. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala farmata hai, or joh log Allah ke ahad ko pukhta karne ke baad us ko torte hai, or un rishto ko torte hai, jinne Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala ne jorne ka hukum diya hai, or zameen mein fasad karte hai, unhi par lanat hai, or unhi ke liye akhret mein jahannam mein gar hoga. So this is a clear warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ra'a, Surah 13 of the Qur'an, verse 25. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And those who violate Allah's covenant after it has been affirmed, they break whatever ties Allah has ordered to be maintained, and they spread corruption in the land. It is they who will be condemned, and they will have the worst abode. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting certain things together to let you know who will be in the worst abode. Now the worst abode Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the hellfire. Ye jahannam ki taraf ishara hai. Ke waha unka gar hoga, waha unko ek khof naak azab milega. This is where they will be punished. So here you break the covenant. The covenant is referring to la ilaha illallah. You are going away from that covenant. Then you are breaking your family ties. Those ties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you. Number three is you spread corruption in the land. Fasad pelana zameen me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has condemned these people. Now the one that we're focusing on today is the breaking of the kinship ties, the breaking of those family ties. Ham ispe upar focus karenge aaj. So here you need to first and foremost, you need to look where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is placing this within the ayah. That number one is, we know how severe it is to break the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ke ahad ko torna, ye kitni buri baat hai. Ke la ilaha illallah ko chorna, ye covenant. Isko chorna, ye bauti kabira guna hai. Uske saath Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne, ye rishto ko kaim karna, to let us know exactly how much of a severe sin it is to break these family ties. And we know as well how much of an enormity it is to, to spread fitna and facade all over the land. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us exactly how much of a normity it is to break the family ties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further, he says in Surah Muhammad, Surah 47 of the Quran, verses 22 to 23. Now, if you in reference to the hypocrites, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now if you turn away, Perhaps you would then spread corruption throughout the land and sever your ties of kinship. These are the ones who Allah has condemned, deafening them and blinding their eyes. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala fir ek intiba deta hai. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala firmata hai. Ab ye munafikin se baat ho rahi hai. Tum se ye baid nahi ke agar tum ko zameen me hukumat mile. تو تم زمین میں فساد کرو گے اور رشتوں کو توڑ دو گے یہ وہ لوگ ہیں جن پر اللہ نے لانت کی ہے تو ان کو بہرہ بنا دیا اور ان کے آنکھوں کو اندھا کر دیا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again bringing them both together and warning the people of breaking these family kingship ties and if you break your family ties if we can move on to the a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have a warning. Ke hum mukammal musalman ho hi nahi sakte agar hum 
یہ جو رشتہ داری دے ناتے جو ہوتے ہیں جن کا حکم دیا گیا ہے اگر ہم ان کو توڑیں تو ہم مکمل مسلمان ہو ہی نہیں سکتے ان دی حدیث آف بخاری ریلیٹڈ بائی سیدنا ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ عنہ the messenger of Allah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم informed us whoever believes in Allah and the last day let him uphold his family ties meaning if you believe in Allah and you believe in the last day then you will be of those who maintain their kinship ties now if somebody breaks their kinship ties اگر یہ ناتو کو تعلقات کو کوئی شخص ان کو توڑ دے یہ نہیں کہ وہ اب کافر ہو گیا یہ پھر بھی یہ مسلمان ہی ہے لیکن بات یہ آتی ہے کہ اب وہ مکمل مسلمان نہیں that you don't become a kafir because these verses these hadiths they exist and some people look at this out of unknowingly and ignorance they look at this and they say okay well if you don't do this then this means that you don't believe in Allah on the last day so you become a kafir no that's not the meaning of it the meaning of this is you are only a complete believer if you maintain your kinship ties now in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related by Ibn Abbas collected in the collection of Imam Ahmad the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said inna rahima shujna akhidatun bi khuzzati rahman yasilu man wasalaha wa yakta'u man qata'aha verily the womb is a branch from the name of the most merciful ar-rahman he will maintain, i.e. Allah will maintain whoever maintains its relations. And he will cut off whoever severs them. That the mother's goat is made by Allah's name Ar-Rahman. The one who will keep his relationship, Allah will keep his relationship. And the one who will keep his relationship, Allah will keep his relationship. So if you maintain these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will maintain you. If you cut off these relations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cut you off also. Now what does it mean by cutting you off? In the addition from Sayyidina Sa'id ibn Zayd in the collection of Imam Ahmad again, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whoever severs its relations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forbid him from entering paradise. Ye bohoti bari intibah hai yaha. غور و فکر کرو یہاں جو بھی اپنے رشتے توڑ دے گا اللہ تبارک و تعالی اس کو جنت میں جانے سے روک دے گا so we think it's very easy people just look at each other they have a little argument little argument I've got nothing to do with you now میرا واسطہ تمہارے پاس نہیں ہے you're dead to me I'm dead to you after this day don't ring me don't message me I don't want to look at you this small action, this small action of ours could be the means of us not entering Jannah. And then what happens? Rishte tor diye, baate ek dousre se nahi kar di, aur jab kisi ka intakal ho jata hai, phir waha pounch jate hai, afsos karne ke liye. When the person dies, then they turn up to, you know, give the condolences to the family. What's the point? What's the point? Faida iska nahi na hoya. If you were sincere in it, you should have done it whilst the person was alive. So cutting off family ties is a big barrier between us and entering Jannah. So you must bear this in mind. Even if somebody has harmed you, koi agar aap ke paas aaye aur bura kaam kare, bure saloo kare, to ye nahi ke aap bhi unke saath bura saloo kare. Because to maintain Rishad Daro, کہ یہ رشتداری جو ناتے وغیرہ ہوتے ہیں ان کو قائم کرنا یہ نہیں ہوتا کہ اگر وہ آپ کے ساتھ ایک اچھا سلوک کریں گے تو پھر آپ ان کے ساتھ اچھا سلوک کرو the meaning of it is not this that just if they are good towards you then you do good actions towards them as well that's not the meaning of it because that's easy everyone can do that if Khatib over here comes to me and says, Imam, here you go. Here's a box of Ferrero Rochers because I heard you like Ferrero Rochers. Hint, right? And then I say, you know what? Khadir's a nice fella. Next week when I come, I'm going to give him a box of Ferrero Rochers as well. That's easy to do. Now, if somebody comes and is horrible to you, somebody comes, you know, 
starts abusing you on WhatsApp chats or whatever it is like that. And then you say, you know what? Here's a box of chocolates. That is the difficult thing. That is the test there. اگر کوئی آپ کے ساتھ برا سلوک کرے اور پھر بھی آپ ان کے ساتھ ایک اچھے طریقے سے پیش آئیں یہ اب آپ کا امتحان ہے کیونکہ نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے یہی ہی کیا ہی واز دا میسنجر اف اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی واز دا پروفٹ اف میرسی ناٹ اونلی ٹو دوز پیپل ہو بیڈ ٹو ہم بٹ سوری ٹو جو ہو جسٹ گڈ ٹو ہم بٹ ہی واز گڈ ٹو دوز اے میرسی فور ٹو دوز ایون ٹو دوز ہو بیڈ ٹو ہم ایز ویل And as the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should bear this in mind whenever we are dealing with people. Don't let this be a means of prevention of you entering the Jannah. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu an, in the collection of Ibn Hibban, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amongst the last things that he said, whilst he was passing away, he said in his illness before passing away, he said, Arhamakum, Arhamakum. Your family relations, your family relations. When Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came up on this disease, and they were the ones who 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 were the ones. Arhamakum, arhamakum. Aapki khandani ta'alakat, aapki khandani ta'alakat. So he gave the warning of this. And another warning that he gave whilst he passed away was, As-salah, as-salah. Your prayer, your prayer. Aapki namaz, aapki namaz. So look at the importance of the prayer. Your importance of the prayer is it's the first thing that you are going to be asked about on the day of judgment. And amongst the last things that the Prophet ﷺ warned us about was our family ties. Letting you know the importance of the family ties again. Sayyidina Qatada radiallahu an relates in the Musnad hadith, in the Musnad of Abi Ya'la, a man came to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, which deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ke nazdeek, koon sa amal sab se ziyada mahboob hai? Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne farmaya, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ke upar iman rakhna. To have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most important thing. You're not a Muslim if you do not have faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after that, The Prophet Sallallahu he is asked by the same man, Uske baad kya? Uske baad koon sa amal sab se mahboob hai Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ke nazdi? Which is then, which is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now pay attention. The Prophet Sallallahu did not say nafal salah. He didn't say zakat. He didn't say sadaqat. He didn't say go and perform as many hajj and umrahs as you can. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, خاندانی تعلقات کو قائم رکھنا لک ہیٹ دس ٹو مینٹین یور فیملی ریلیشنشپ دس کمز آفٹر ہیو فیتھ ان اللہ سبحان و تعالی نا پلیز ڈونٹ گیٹ می رانگ یہ غلط مت سمجھنا یہ نہیں بات ہو رہی کہ آپ ایمان لاؤ اور اس کے بعد رشتہ داری خاندانی تعلقات جو ہے ان کو قائم رکھو اور پھر نماز وغیرہ نہ پڑھو یہ بات نہیں ہو رہی کیونکہ جو فرد ہے فریضہ جو ہے ان کو بھی قائم کرنا ہے Your fard actions, you have to do those actions as well. So no one take the meaning of this to mean that after I've become a Muslim, the only thing I need to do is maintain my family ties. I don't need to pray or fast or give zakat, etc. No, no, you still have to do all of that. But this is something which is being emphasized by the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. Then the man asked the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, which deeds are most hateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? کون سے اعمال اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ کے نزدیک سب سے زیادہ ناپسندیدہ ہیں دا پروفیس اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ ٹو ایسوشیٹ آئیڈوز ود اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ کہ بت پرستی کرنا لوکا سویر دس از ٹو ڈو شیپ ٹو ورشپ ادر دین اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ٹو ورشپ آئیڈوز دین ہی سیڈ دین واٹ اس کے بعد کون سا عمل سب سے ناپسندیدہ ہے دا میسنجر آف اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ ٹو سیور فیملی ریلیشنشپس خاندانی تعلقات کو توڑنا دکھا دی ایمفسز دا اف بین پٹ اپان مینٹین ان یور فیملی ٹائز دین دا میسنجر آف اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز آسک واٹ آفٹر دیٹ اینڈ ہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ ٹو انجوائن ایول اینڈ سوری ٹو انجوائن ایول اینڈ فور بیٹ گڈ کہ برائی کا حکم دینا اور نیکی سے منع کرنا دس از ویری امپورٹنٹ ایز ویل دیٹ دی تھرڈ تھنگ از 
that the hukum upon us is what? To enjoin good, call people towards good actions and forbid bad actions. Tell them with what is good and do not call towards which is bad, warn them against that which is bad. But the third thing which is mentioned here is the opposite. And this is happening in our ummah. In our ummah, this, these things are happening. People are calling towards bad and they are staying quiet and warning people away from doing good. Somebody may tell somebody to go and do a good action and the person will come to them and say to them, Ye kya kar rahe ho? Usko kyu keh rahe ho ye kar? Balke aap unko sif yehi keh rahe ho ki bhai utho namaz paro. Koi dousra aay jayega o kahega, ye aisa nahi karna chahiye. Usko mat kaho namaz na paro. Ye uski duty hai, this is an obligation upon you. You're telling somebody to get up and pray salah, obviously in a nice way, not you better get up and pray salah or you become a kafir. No, 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 no one said that. They become a kafir if they deny the obligation of the prayer. If they don't deny the obligation of prayer, then the, and they're just lazy, then there's a different ruling upon that. So when you call somebody to do a good action, we are in that time where people will say to you, do not call them to do good actions, leave them alone. Jane dose. But when it comes to doing bad things, people will say to them, come on, come on. It's, it's good. Tell them to do the bad things. So we need to be very careful. Now, what about if somebody is a non-Muslim? Koi Musliman ho jata hai. He converts, becomes a Muslim. And we use the word convert because as Brother Mahdi, when he accepted Islam, he wrote an article on this and he said, why are you calling us reverts? I didn't leave Islam because the revert in the, the meaning of that is you left Islam and then you came back into Islam. So you left and then you reverted back to Islam. He said, I never left Islam. Yes, I, you know, we are born upon fitrah, but that wasn't Islam. That's natural inclination. We are all upon natural inclination. So when I became a Muslim, that was my own choice. This is Brother Mahdi, I'm summarizing his article. He gave a lot of more uh, explanation on this. He says, when I accepted Islam, then I converted from my previous state to Islam. By you saying to me, I reverted, you are saying I became an apostate and then I accepted Islam again. So when new Muslims become Muslim, don't call them reverse. I used to make this mistake as well. It's common because unfortunately it's been popularized by a certain media uh, platform and a TV channel. But the word is convert. So if a convert accepts Islam now, he's going to have non-family members who, who sorry, non-Muslim family members. So what is the ruling on them now? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, answers this. So in the collection of Imam Bukhari and Muslim hadith Mutafakun Alay, related by Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Verily, the relatives of my father are not my allies. Verily, only Allah and the righteous believers are my allies. Ke be shak, mere walid ke rishtadar mere halif nahi hai. Sirf jo mu'mineen hai, wohi mere saati hai. Yet, they, i.e. the non-Muslims, they have the bonds of kinship with me and I will uphold their family ties. Ke phir bhi, unke paas rishtadari hai aur un mein so here, again, the person who accepts Islam and if he has non-Muslim family members, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying here, they are not your companions, they are not your allies. Only the Muslims, the righteous Muslims here. Mu'mineen, ye nahi musulman, mu'mineen kaha, jo saleh hai, unki baat ho rahi hai. That those who are righteous Muslims, only they are your allies. But you have family kinship ties with them, which you must uphold. So meaning what? If the non-Muslim has a non-Muslim mother or a father, they must still tend to their needs. 
If they are sick in hospital, they must still go and visit them. They must still make sure their parents are eating well, they are living well. They are not in any hardship. Their brothers and sisters, the same thing. So all of this must be borne in mind. Now, a greater warning that the Messenger of Allah has given, and we always have this question, this is a common question which is asked. One of the reasons that du'as are not answered is because you are not maintaining your family kinship ties. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri radiallahu an, he relates the hadith. There is no Muslim who calls upon Allah without sin or cutting family ties, but that Allah will give him one of three answers. Ke koi musliman aisa nahi jo Allah ko pukarta hai bagair guna ke ya khandani ta'alaqa tore huye lekin Allah tabarak wa ta'ala usse teen mein se ek jawab dega. What is the three, uh, what are the three answers? Number one, he will quickly fulfill his supplication. Teoski dua jal se jal puri ho jayegi. Number two, he will store it for him in the hereafter. Ke akhirat mein uska jawab usko milega. Yani ajar ke tor pe. That he will receive the, the rewards of it in the hereafter. The third answer will be, that he will divert an evil from him similar to it. To nuksan se koi nuksan uske taraf aane se Allah tabarak wa ta'ala usko usse bacha dega. These are the three ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the du'as. They said the sahaba in that case we will ask for more and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah has even more. To aap maangte raho Allah tabarak wa ta'ala usse ziyada kabool karta jayega. یہ مایوس مت ہوگا کہ ہم دعا مانگ رہے ہیں اللہ تبارک و تعالی نہیں قبول فرما رہا شاید جو آپ مانگ رہے ہیں وہ آپ کے لئے اچھا نہیں ہے تو اللہ تبارک و تعالی اس چیز کو آپ سے دور رکھ رہا ہے because it may be the case a lot of people they say you know and people do this people do this they make dua Allah let us win the lottery first of all you, you're making dua for haram this is haram یہ haram ہے and maybe it may be the case and there's many Go and look in the list. How many people have won the lottery? Kino ne lottery win ki hai. Look at their state. None of them keep their wealth. They end up in a worse state than before. Look at it. Research upon it if you, if you get time. One individual, I'll give you one individual example. He won the lottery. And he said, I'm going to invest it. Me isko invest karunga. And he created an investment company and he had two people working for him who were doing his investments. And what happens here? They were doing the investments for him and they were taking money from him. Then he found out what they were doing and he approached them. The man, the woman who was in charge of his investment company and her husband, they killed him. And they buried him underneath the extension. Then they got found out. But this is how the evil of it goes. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to protect you for some evil. I will not marry anybody else. And they make dua. I only want to marry this person. Maybe that person's not right for you. And later on, when you get your akal taqane jab aajata hai, then you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah didn't allow me to marry this person. Because now that man that you wanted to marry identifies as a woman, or that woman you wanted to marry identifies as a man. And if you had got married to them, then what would have happened? Right? But that's people's own personal choice. They can do what they want. That's not the discussion here. Spending on family is like charity. Spending on family is like charity. Sayyidina Salman ibn Amir in the collection of Imam Tirmidhi, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Verily, charity given to the poor has one reward. And the charity that you give to your family has two rewards. Agar aap kisi gareeb ko paise doge, ye ek ajar aapko milega. Lekar apne handaan pe agar kharch karoge, to do ajar aapko milenge. 
Why? Because the first one is for charity. Pella ajar yehi hoga ke apne sadakat khairat kiya. But you're giving it to your family. You would have had to do that anyway. The second one is kyunke apne 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 handani risto ko kaim kiya. So because you maintained your family ties, you will receive the second reward for that. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there's much more to say, but very quickly before we uh, close off. Last two hadith. Ibn Umar relates a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recorded by Imam Bukhari in his Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. Whoever fears his Lord and maintains family ties. Because we all say we want to be rich. We all want to be rich. Imam Sahib, give us a way to become rich. Give us a way to become rich. Here, I'll tell you a way how to become rich. Whoever fears his Lord and maintains family ties, his life will be prolonged. His wealth will be enriched. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala uske maal mein barkate nazil karega. And his family will love him. His family will love him. Sayyidina Jubayr ibn Mutim in the collection of Imam Muslim and Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La yadkhulul jannata qati'u rahim. The one who severs his family ties will not enter paradise. So be aware. Be aware of this. Please, I repeat it again. Don't break your family ties over silly things. Brothers and sisters do this all the time. Brothers and brothers do this all the time. You support Liverpool, unfortunately, and they're playing. And then Manchester United, you support them, the other brother, unfortunately, and they're playing. Now you've got a clash. And then Nuri comes in and he says, I support Arsenal, we're going to win the league, right? Now these three brothers have got a predicament. And they're saying, I want to watch it. And then one of them just gets angry and he picks up the TV and smashes it. Fine, nobody's watching it. <coughs> and the other brothers turn around and say to him, right, we've got nothing to do with you now. We don't want anything to do with you. You broke the TV. This was our bloodline. This is all we do at night time. What are we going to do now? They cut our family ties with him now. We're not speaking to you. This will be a hindrance, a barrier between you entering paradise. All because of what? You wanted to watch a couple of men running around in shorts, kicking balls around. You want to break off your family ties because of this? You want to ruin your akhirah for silly things like this? Please be careful. Love your family and they will love you. You love your family, not just your direct family. It's the relationships of the womb. Within this comes your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your uncles, your grandparents, your grandchildren, your nephews and your nieces. Why? Because you all come from the same womb. And we want to extend it even more. You can extend it to every Muslim brother and sister as well because we all come from Sayyidah Hawa alayhi salam. So be careful, do not ruin your akhirah for petty things. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to maintain, allow us to maintain our relationship ties.